Howdy everyone, my name is Escape Pac-Man and welcome to Do Not Take This Cat Home. It was a game that was recommended on my Discord, and from what I know this has several endings and is kind of creepy, but it's more of a point and click one of those kinds of adventures, so let's get into it. You're not having a great day, as usual. Oh, great. It's the first time in a while that you felt like going out. But in the middle of your walk, it starts to rain. Typical. But maybe this is just a sign that you should have stayed home today. Yeah, you could always try again tomorrow, right? You turn to head home when... Excuse me. What was that? There's only a few people around on the street. Makes sense due to the increased missing persons around the area recently. Well, that and the weather. But none of them react to the sound at all. Curiosity guiding your steps, you follow the sound to the entrance of a dark, dingy alleyway. You timidly enter the alley and walk forward. The ground dampened by the rain makes your steps sound louder and more confident than you actually feel. Geek out. Finally, the sound source comes into view in the cold, dim light of the alley. At the end of the alley, in a big cardboard box... Oh, he's cute. He's a cat. I have a black cat. His name's Velcro. He's an asshole. Moving on. Huh. Guess that should have been obvious. It's an interesting looking cat. Its pretty yellow eyes shine like gold among this dark sea of its black fur. Oh, hi kitty. It puts its front paws up on the edge of the box and looks up at you. <laughs> He's so cute. Purr meow. So cute. I just said that. <clears throat> and it definitely knows it. You've never had much of opinion one way or another about cats before, but if they're all like this one, it's a shock they haven't already found a way to rule the world. Foreshadowing. You don't think you'd mind bowing down to a feline overlord? You look around the alley with a small frown. Who leaves cats in cardboard boxes these days anyway? Wouldn't they just jump out and leave the box eventually? Cat doesn't answer you. For obvious reasons. Cat, uh, oh my god. It also doesn't do as you suggest and leave the box. It's just looking at you. Menacingly! As if waiting for you to make the next move. Um... <clears throat> I'm going to do as the title of the game says and do not take the cat home, but I'm going to quick save first. Important. <laughs> With a sigh, you take a decisive setback. As cute as the cat is, you really can't afford to be taking in a pet on a whim. Rent's coming up soon and your job doesn't exactly leave you rolling in dough. You give the cat a sad nod. Sorry. Good luck out there, okay? The cat doesn't respond. You turn around and leave the cat in the alley behind. Rain's picking up. Oh, poor kitty. Time to head home. Ending. Nyatafu. <laughs> oh, so that's that's an actual ending. You just don't take the cat home. All right. Uh, skip. Uh, let's take the cat home this time. Dot dot dot. You know what? Screw it. You reach in the box, pick up the cat, holding it out in front of you. Why not? No. You're all alone and, well, I'm kind of in the same boat myself, so you bring the cat close. You didn't realize it was shivering until just then, but it slowly breathes easier as it presses into your chest. Why not stick together, right? At least for a little while. 
Oh, the kitty. You think a little while will probably be more like a day. You'll be responsible and take it to a shelter tomorrow. But for now, let's get you out of the rain, okay? Meow. Meow. You stop by a small local pet store for some cat food, then head back home. You live in a modest apartment. One bedroom, one bathroom. One you living alone in it. So it feels weird having another living being inside of it after so long. Even if it is just a cat. After locking the front door and placing the cat on the floor, you watch for a moment as it curiously explores the new apartment, the new environment. Leaving the feline to its own devices, you set about making the both of you some dinner. You take out the can of cat food and open it with a tap on top. Put some cat food on a saucer and click your tongue to call the cat over to you. You kitty kitty. It perks up at your beckoning and rushes over. It looks at the plate of food and completely ignores it. Not hungry, I guess. You try not to let it annoy you. The cat doesn't understand the concept of money to appreciate that you spent your hard-earned cash on it. It's just a cat after all. I'll just leave it here if you get hungry later, okay? The cat rubs its body against your legs with a purr. You smile. That's enough of a thanks for you. It follows you into the kitchen as you start on your own dinner. You decide that you have enough ingredients for a sandwich. Bread toasted, mayo and mustard spread, turkey and cheese with lettuce perfectly placed. What? Ow! You wince as you cut your finger on a knife while slicing tomato. Stupid. You feel a little embarrassed for such blunder and sigh, tossing the knife into the, onto the cutting board. You're about to head to the bathroom for a bandage when the cat hops up on the counter. It sniffs the knife and meows almost pointedly at you. Oh, don't worry. I'm all right. It's just a... <clears throat> Ow. You watched as the cat starts to... Lick lightly, but enthusiastically at the blood on the knife at your blood. You're so shocked that by the time you come to your senses, the knife has been completely licked clean. The cat sits back, staring at you. You... you feel a little uneasy. Sure, cats are meat-eating predators, but that was a little weird. Right? Sure, you're no cat expert, but that was definitely not something an ordinary cat would do. Right? Sir, or madam, I haven't checked. Well, regardless, you're not about to abandon a cat in need while it's still raining outside. Not after all your efforts. You're going to take it to the shelter tomorrow anyways. What's one night of awkwardness? Weird or not, it's just a cat. Keep telling yourself that, buddy. The rest of the evening, unfortunately, goes downhill from there. Even after covering up your fingers cut with a bandage, the cat keeps trying to lick at the wound while you're eating your sandwich, while you're cleaning up the kitchen, while you're trying to watch TV. You gently push it away every time, but you're starting to get worried at the strange behavior. What if it's got a taste for blood and thinks you're food now? You're not sure what you'll do if it starts to get more aggressive. You keep thinking about the cat food sitting in the corner, untouched. Meow. <coughs> Ugh, come on, enough already. You shove it away a little more forcefully, this time out of annoyance. Feel bad immediately, but before you can do anything, the cat meows sharply at you and dashes off around the corner and into the hall. You sigh deeply. At this point, you're just worried that it's going to take a bite out of you in your sleep. Maybe a vet will have an idea how to calm it down? You can only hope. You don't have many other options left other than tossing the cat out in the rain. After finding a number of a local vet, you pick up your landline and... Shit. The lights just... went out. 
great. Just great. Rain must have knocked out the power. You check your cell phone only to find that it's out of battery. You must have forgotten to charge it before leaving out earlier. The outing must have been so spur of the moment that it had no doubt messed with your usual routine. Grab a flashlight and turn it on. It's quiet. It's too quiet. Did the rain stop? But then why'd the power go out? You look outside. Sky is pitch black. What time is it? Turn to check the clock. The cat sits on top of your digital clock, staring at you. It says, kill, help, 666. Huh. I know it says hell. It says kill and hell. Huh. Nice. Thinking now, you realize the clock shouldn't be working at all with the power outage, but the numbers are lit up and going completely haywire. The cat stares at you. It's completely still. You'd think it was a statue if it didn't know any better. It's not giving off any indication that it's alive. It's not blinking. It's not even breathing. But its eyes. This isn't normal. You're afraid. You went to run, but you're afraid of letting the cat out of your sight. You consider tossing the cat out after all. But as soon as the thought enters your head, you feel a sharp urge to vomit. Those eyes. Its eyes hold you still. Even with your flashlight trained on it, its pupils are large, round, inky pits. The flashlight flickers and shuts off. And the cat is gone. Fear immediately grips your mind. Silence punctuated with a rapid pumping of blood in your heart is overridden as your ears slowly start to pick up the sound of static all around you. How's the clock working with no power? You don't know why such a question matters at the moment, but you feel as if having the answer will make sense out of everything that's happening. That order will be restored, but no answer comes to mind. Back away from the clock and feel as if the air itself coils tightly and abruptly in response, like a predator prepared to pounce, but waiting, waiting for your next move. But you're afraid to move. You're afraid to even take a breath. But you can't stay still forever, right? Whatever's watching you you can already feel its impatience. It's too eager. You don't know how you know this, but you can sense it as clearly as if it had whispered. Whoa, that was creepy. <laughs> well done. Right into your ear, right into your soul. It won't let you wait it out. Not that you could, even if it did. You can't stay here. You have to run. With this thought, a sudden primal instinct awakes in you, making it, making you tear yourself into a hasty burst of movement, of action, but you're still weak from the fear's grip of your mind. Your legs tangle together under your haste, and you fall to the ground. Ow. <laughs> a sharp pain explodes in the center of your foot, at first, you think you've broken your ankle, but something warm and wet trickles down the length of your foot, pooling underneath it. You hear a sound of metal scraping on tiles after skidding across the floor, as if it had been kicked. Winded from your fall, you look up in a daze and see the object glinting in a strange light coming from outside. The light pouring in from your now open front door. Thoughts of how, when, who, what in regards to your inexplicably open door screech to a halt. As your brain finally identifies the metallic object you've been staring at, 
it's your kitchen knife and still tinted red from your earlier blender. That's not right. Was it completely licked clean by the... You gulp dryly at the pain in your foot. You barely have time to wonder how the knife ended up in your living room floor to be stepped on, instead of resting on your cutting board in the kitchen where you left it. When you spy something in the darkness just beyond the knife... It spies right back at you. A pair of glowing golden eyes come forward as the cat emerges from the shadows, the light from your doorway, into the light from your doorway. It pads lightly over to the knife as if skipping into light. It bends down to lap the blood dripping from the blade. Your senses slowly begin to overwhelm you. The chill of the air as it starts to suffocate you under its weight. The sound of shaky breaths discordant against the static now piercing your skull. The dryness on your tongue spreading through to your throat. The incomprehensible sight of the stray you've taken in. Licking away at your kitchen knife, once again completely clean, the scent of blood from the fresh wound on your foot. Blood? Golden eyes slide up to you as if in response to your sudden realization. Blood. You're hurt. Your foot is bleeding. You're bleeding. You're bleeding. The cat barely moves, shoulders twitching as if considering the act of pouncing forward but you're already on your feet and out the door. You run, or rather limp, down the empty street. The sky is black, bleeding red. There's a strange light emitting from nowhere that casts everything else in white. The houses, the trees, the road, even you. Everything, except your blood. You can just barely glimpse the blood imprints your injured foot leaves in your wake with every impact it makes with the ground. It hurts. It hurts. But you can't stop. You don't stop. Not when the shadows grow around you. Not when you feel the gaze of eyes all over you. Not when the road ahead of you is darkened by a long shadow of something behind you. Even then, you don't stop running. Because if that's the cat right there ahead of you, then what in the world is behind you oh no <laughs> um I want to look behind me huh interesting very very interesting ending zero it begins ah Oh, I didn't do a... There we go. So, we looked behind us last time, and apparently that's an ending. Let's keep running. Huh. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Wait, what? Something happened, you think, anyway. You can't really remember what. Ending zero, it begins. Oh my god, there are so many endings. Okay, so instead of going back to this one, because it's apparently broken, quick load. Yes. Keep running. So both of those does nothing. It continue. You're walking. Oh, interesting. That's cool. Right, of course. It's the first time in a while that you felt like going out. And you're actually glad you did. The weather's absolutely perfect today. That's a good sign, right? Maybe your luck is finally starting to turn around. You tentatively allow yourself to feel excited for the possibilities where you could go or what you could do. Maybe even who you can meet. You're so deep in thought that you almost miss it. That 
damn cat. Huh? What was that? Curiosity guiding your steps, you follow the sound to the entrance of a lonely alleyway. The sunlight only just manages to reach down in between the tall buildings on either side. You timidly enter the alley and walk forward, the loose gravel and scattered debris on the ground softening your steps. Meow. Finally, the sound source comes into view in the warm, almost ethereal light of the alley. At the end of the alley, in a big cardboard box, is the key cap. I guess that should have been obvious. It's an interesting looking cat. Pretty yellow eyes shine like gold among the dark sea of its black fur. So is this all the same, just a different intro to the alley? Interesting. You look so... familiar. Right? Then again, it is a cat. Not many different ways for a standard black cat to look, after all. This one sure is a cutie, though. Just look. It's not glaring at you or hissing at you or getting this close like other stray cats. It's just sitting there, patiently, waiting for you to do something. What if we don't take this one home? Let's quick save. Don't take this one home. Sadly, as cute as the cat is, you'd never take this thing home with you. You just can't take it home with you. You're responsible for the No. No. You are. With rent and bills to pay for, not to mention you need to buy food to survive, there's no way you could afford a cat long term, right? You can barely afford this little outing on your day off. What to do? Oh, there's even more. Let's leave the cat. You don't think it's a good idea to get the cat's hopes up of having someone look after it if you're not willing to commit? What if it gets attached and somehow tracks you down back to your home? Wait, what did that say? Sorry, see you around, I guess. You stand up and catch watching your every move. You make it halfway out of the alley when the cat meows almost pitifully at you. Sorry, dude. Aw, how are you supposed to walk away from that? What kind of monster would you be if you could? You sigh a little and walk back to the cat. Oh no. Ah, I did the wrong one. I thought it meant turn back from coming back to the cat. Whatever, it's fine. Yeah, sure. It looks almost hopeful. Its tail swishing faster as it leans up a, a little more towards you. As if eager for your next move. Ah, you know what, fine. It's strange. The more you hesitate to leave the alley, the more you find yourself wondering. What's the point? You'll go where? Do what? What's the point when you're all, always doing all of it completely and utterly alone? Even going home to your apartment wouldn't help, would it? One bedroom, one bathroom, and one you living alone in it? It's been like that for so, so long. So long. You're startled when you feel an impossibly soft paw press slightly against your wet cheek. You didn't realize you'd been crying. Or that your little breakdown had literally brought you to your knees, right in front of this cat's box. You feel slightly embarrassed, but the cat responds as if it can sense your self-deprecating feelings creeping in. Yo. It presses its paw on your cheek three times in quick succession, as if trying to slap you out of your melancholic state. But they're so light, the slaps feel more like getting gently and eagerly petted. <laughs> Can't help but laugh a little. Can't believe I'm having a meltdown in a dirty old alley with a stray cat comforting me. You smile and show your gratitude with a scratch on the cat's chin. Thanks. I'm fine, really. That just happens sometimes. I really do like being alone most of the time. It's the only time I feel comfortable being myself, 
you know? But even I get lonely every now and then. It's easy to ignore when I'm keeping myself busy. That's why I pushed myself to go out today, I think. Eh, or maybe I was hoping to make a friend or something. Well, I guess that wouldn't be a good idea. I doubt someone like me would make for a very good friend to anyone. Excuse me. Okay, okay. I won't go so far to say that, but... You stay. And just... Talk to the cat. About anything that comes to mind. Your isolation, your loneliness, your many fears, your losses, your emptiness. Although, the longer you stay there, the smaller that once insignificant... The smaller that once significant emptiness feels. It's been so long since someone just listened. Your words shift to gentler topics. Your hopes, your dreams, happy memories of the past. As you talk, you don't even notice the once cold concrete walls of the alley becoming flesh-like. Warm and pink. It's soft and slowly engulfing both of you. The sound of your own voice feels hypnotic as it reaches your ears, encouraging you to speak more of the depths of your heart into the open. You give in easily. When you do run out of words, you're not sure how long you've been sitting there. But not knowing doesn't seem to bother you. Still, a strange question enters your mind. Leave and go home? Why would I want to do that? You're too tired to move. Pouring out your heart and soul has taken a surprising toll on you. But you have no regrets. You're so... happy. You don't think you've ever felt so heard. So seen. You lean forward to rest your head on the box. You don't feel rough cardboard where you're, you were exper expecting. Instead, you find yourself resting on a mass of... something? Something soft and slightly damp and warm. So... so warm. But you can't find it in you to care what it could be. You're so tired. Close your eyes. And you get the feeling that they'll probably never open again. Hello. But as that all-encompassing warmth encases you slowly, completely, you feel nothing but pure contentment. Ending 22, not alone. Well, that's an interesting ending. Let's do one or two more, and we'll see what, what happens. Right, of course. First time in a while you felt good going out. Uh... So this is the same intro as last time. Okay, so we're back to here. Let's do not take the cat home. Leave the cat. Ignore the cat. Nope, nope. You need to nip this in the bud and get on with your day. It's what's best for both of you. You leave the alley and continue on your way. Wait, what was I doing? In all the excitement of dealing with your furry dilemma, you've forgotten that you still hadn't decided what you were going to do with your day off. Oh, more choices. Quick save. Uh, let's go to the carnival. You spend a day at the carnival. Ferris wheel, roller coaster, pharaoh boat. Rides you've been on before. Hoops, coin toss, balloon darts. Games you've played before. Funnel cake, popcorn, cotton candy. Food you've eaten before. All things you've enjoyed before. You're surrounded by groups of people all having fun together, laughing, playing, eating, taking pictures, making memories. And then there's you. The sun hasn't started to set yet, it's still high in the sky, but it will soon. You start to wonder, maybe you should just go home for the day. Then you stop in your tracks. You see something. New. An attraction you've never seen before. 
a maze of funhouse mirrors? It sounds kind of lame, honestly. There isn't even a line to get in. But then, what else is there to do? Let's go in the maze. You enter the maze. A few rooms in and you notice that the mirrors aren't all weird. Somehow, you, some just show you looking back at yourself. A little bored, a lot tired, and so very, very... Maybe this was a mistake. Why did you think going into a maze of mirrors was a good idea? Even if it was something new to experience. I can't do this today. You turn around and head back the way you came. Shit. You bump into a mirror. What the? Where's the exit? You try again, only to find another mirror blocking your way. By the time you're all turned around, you've realized that the way you came in is completely gone. Oh, okay. Don't panic. I just have to keep going forward, right? You step through the only opening you can find and nearly trip over something on the ground. You bend down to pick it up. What's, what's this doing here? In your hands rests a worn-looking flashlight. Curious, you flick it on. Huh. Light doesn't look very... Crap, the lights. Did the power go out, or did the attraction operator forget you were in here? Well, how long have you been in here, actually? You pull out your phone to check the time, maybe call the police, and your phone is dead. You grip the flashlight in your hand. The light it emitted earlier was dim enough for you to know it. There's probably not much juice left. Best to reserve it for worst case scenario if you fight and feel your way out. Yeah. 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 You can do this. Take a calming breath. Well, forward we go. Hello, darling adventure. Welcome to the Mirror Maze. Would you like to know how to navigate the maze? Uh, yes, I need help. Once again, welcome to the mirror maze. You're in a bit of a jam, but don't worry. You're in good hands. Or rather, good paws. Ah, fuck. See these little cuties here? They'll be doing their best to guide you through the maze. Aren't they generous? When you enter a room, the emergency light will flash. Letting you see the paths before you for just a second. And also what lies beyond them. Whenever you see these kind kitties, just go where they are and you'll reach the next room. Unfortunately, they're not the only things in here. It's highly suggested that you refrain from following any of our other guests. They can be sneaky or distracting. But they're always hostile. So please take caution with advancing to the next room. Of course, this wouldn't be much of a mirror maze without mirrors. Can they, can they hurt you? No, they're just mirrors, silly. They don't do anything at all. And you can't do anything to them either. They're just an obstacle you can't pass through. Go left, go center, or go right choice is yours. Though, if you find a room with no helpful kitties in sight, and all the paths lead to a mirror or something else, it's recommended you stay put. And just maybe it will work itself out. Now, for your navigation tools. That flashlight you found doesn't have much juice left. It'll only let you get a quick peek, extra peek at your surroundings for about five times. So try not to use it all at once. 25 rooms and 3 lives. You can keep track of your progress through the rooms up to the left. And your lives up to the right. You've got 3 lives, but be careful to avoid less friendly guests lurking around. Why only 3 lives, you ask? Because you're soft and squishy. It wouldn't take much, damage, much to damage you beyond repair. Okay. And besides, you're human. And humans usually only have one life, right? And yet, here you get three. Don't you think 
you are to show a little more gratitude. And that's the end of your tutorial. Hopefully that was helpful. Are you ready to play? Uh, I guess. Okay. Three, two, one. Right. Okay, next room. Right. Left. Stay. This room feels off. I think something just changed. Left. Left. Right. No. Stay. I think something just changed. Forward. Center. Right. 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 Center. Center. Stay. Left. Center. Right. Center. Left. Center. Center. Left. Left. Stay. You see it. The exit. You run forward, but as you do, the scenery shifts. Just slightly at first. But you're running too fast to stop yourself from colliding into the glass. Except, you don't quite go into the glass. You don't exactly collide with it either. You simply pass through it. And on the other side, you see an endless white void and... Oh, dear God. <laughs> Yourself? Dozens of you. Hundreds of you wandering around. Aimless. Faceless. And empty. So empty and listless, they don't even acknowledge your presence. Try to turn back. The glass doesn't give. Past the glass is the cat. A familiar black cat walks up and looks at you. You think it meows at you, but you can't make out the sound. It tilts its head, then walks away. The glass goes dark, and then disappears. Then you watch it, watch helplessly as it disappears completely. You're trapped with only yourself as company. Ending 19, you beat the maze. Nice. Well, I think we're gonna leave this episode here. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, if you want me to continue this game and try and get all of the endings, I will happily do that. Just let me know in the comments below. If you enjoy games like this, clicker games, or all of these roguelikes, I guess this is what you would call this. Leave a like if you enjoy these kinds of games. Subscribe if you're new here, and I will see you guys next time.